video is part of a series we've been doing actually for the last several weeks. We've had some of the highest ratings on this subject than any video that we've ever done. That must mean lots of you are as confused as we think you are about mortgage section, final expense, life insurance leads. And so that's why we have now created a playlist so you can go through all of them if you're looking to uh, buy leads or you want to know more about leads or you've read somewhere on the internet or the interwebs that buying leads is a scam and everybody's trying to rip you off. If that's the case, you really want to watch all of these videos. Watch them all the way through the end because there's a lot of nuggets. I brought in a couple of top producers that share their mindset, what they're doing. I've got another one this week that we had actually last week. Because the bottom line is leads allow us to scale our income. You, can, you certainly do not have to buy leads. But if you want to scale your income into multiple six figures and even seven figures, you got to have more conversation. You can't just do the warm market the stuff. Video. So you we talked about in order to work leads successfully, you need to be intentional about your business and how you spend your money. There are things that the top producers uh, that are very successful are doing when they buy their leads on a weekly basis. We've, uh, I've asked Angela to come back this week to go over two more items, really, that you must consider when you're buying leads. So let me get her in the studio here. Hang on one second. Just like this, a flash in the pan, and she's here. There she is. Hey, Angela. Hi. How you doing? I'm having a fantastic and frenzied day. Ever, yeah, you anybody ever have one day. of those days? It's just where you kind of are like a ping pong ball getting bounced around. Yeah. So crazy yeah. day. Yeah. So let's move into the, on to the subject. We've talked a lot about leads. I, I'm going to have you back probably one more time because I still get a lot of texts, a lot of emails. I, in fact, I went back and forth yesterday on the final expense, mortgage station leads, which one's best, which one do you buy? And I'm not going to even talk about that today because it's going to be a 15 minute conversation. Yeah. Uh, but again, I think you're, I, I would just say to that person, you're overthinking the business. Okay, yeah, leads totally. are leads. We are life insurance salespeople, right? Final expense of mortgage session is life insurance. You're overthinking. Those kind of decisions do nothing but confuse you. It creates busy work. You're not, you're not talking to anybody that wants to buy life insurance. You're talking to yourself. Or you're interviewing all the other agents in the, in the, right. in the industry about what they're doing. You're better off just taking action. You know, be intentional. Totally. Be Let's take action. Totally. Just, just get in the game, man. Totally. You know it is not, time. we talk about it all the time. And which is yeah. kind of like, even when you were talking, when we were talking about what we wanted to talk about today. And my first thought was how to phrase it and how to walk people down that path without them, without people, you cannot get stuck in the busy work because like my, my envisioning is what happens with a lot of people. And that is they start down this path of, well, I'm trying to figure out this. And three weeks later, or three days later, or three hours later, you still haven't made a decision. Oh, days. Yeah, days you have to treat it like months, a you, know, you, you got to treat it like a ticking ready. bomb. Get ready yeah. to get ready. Yeah, right. we, 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 I put a video up there. It's, 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 it's take consistent, imperfect action. Will go much farther than I mean. You ask your your mentor or coach. As long as that mentor or coach has a financial interest in your success. If you're surveying agents across the industry, they're going to tell you some willy-nilly crap that doesn't work, it may work, it might work, or work one time, they're not doing it anymore, whatever, because they don't care if you succeed. They don't have any financial interest in your success. Anyway, so Angela, what is your approach when you're looking at leads? You know, it's like looking at, uh, or look, I, I look at it like livestock. If I were going to be a cattleman or I was going to buy championship horses or i was going to breed cattle there are things i'd look for right yes so, I, i'm sure. assuming because i wouldn't be a cow you're not a cattle person so to talk to everybody this week about what you look for what are those final boxes that you want to check when you're considering a batch of leads to purchase the first thing that i do once i've identified which we already talked about am i buying like mortgage protection leads, or am I going into a different field, which I think we can all establish. I, I, I buy mortgage protection leads. I'm buying, I'm being, buying mortgage data leads. That's, that's what I'm buying. People that have either recently purchased or refinanced a home or taken out a home equity line, something, it's something related to a real estate transaction. That's what I do, period. Uh, I don't do the other stuff. I don't look at the other stuff because I typically don't, I just don't wander down that path. Yeah. So once I've identified, okay, I want mortgage protection leads, 
The second thing is to identify what state I'm going to be working in, because one of the videos that I know that you've talked about, and that is having um, additional licenses, having non-resident licenses is super, super important. You, you are not the only person doing this. Yeah. And for some agents, I think that is uh, an obvious but surprising amount of information, right? You're not the only one in this industry. And I'll bet you something else, you're not the only one in this industry in your state. So, and if you live in a very popular state, um, you know, a Florida, a California, a Texas, um, uh, there's lots of other popular states, but those three came to mind. Um, you, then you definitely have to have non-resident licenses because there may not be any leads, it, the type of lead that you're looking for in your particular area. So having non-resident licenses is absolutely uh, unbelievably important. I can't stress that enough. I probably have, I don't know, maybe a dozen, maybe 20, somewhere in there. Um, of various states throughout the country that I like working that I have found success in. Some of them I don't have a lot of success. I don't use them very often, but it is what it is. So the second thing, so once you've identified, you know, where you have licenses, then you want to look at those particular states and figure out where geographically does it make the most sense to start working those states. So I'll give you an example. In California, you know, you're not going to want to necessarily work the desert area between like California, between like, you know, in between like California and Nevada, you know, that the desert area there, there's not, there's not going to be a lot of people. So trying to, trying to extract leads there, probably not, not going to be as, as popular. Um, I tend to look for a balance between an area that is very, um, uh, um, I don't know what the word is. I can't, my brain is fried. Not like a city center. Like I, you know, downtown Los Angeles is not a great area to be looking for, for lead volume because it's commercial area. Um, and super, super dense city areas where you're going to have a lot of maybe low income housing. You want to stay away from that stuff because, um, you're going to be dealing with clients that, uh, that uh, are, are kind of scraping by. Um, and some people say, well, they were able to buy a home. Yes, that's true. But you're going to have a much better um, opportunity working in areas that are kind of in between more of the suburban areas, in my opinion, right? Family neighborhoods, housing developments. There are new housing developments in Florida where we see lots of volume coming out of them. Why? Because there's lots of people buying homes now. Um, summertime in a suburban area is a great time because families are moving, they're closing on houses, they're moving. So I tend to look at more suburban areas and we're looking again, people that are not on either end of the spectrum. You don't want people that are I want to work Beverly Hills. I want people to have money. Right. Here's the problem. The people that have Beverly Hills type of money have financial planners. They have made arrangements for what's going to happen when they pass away to the mortgage, to the home, they have trusts set up, they have lot, they have lot, large life insurance policies set up, they have lots of savings, they've made that financial plan. So you don't want the people that are on the very wealthy end of the spectrum, and you don't want the people that are on the very low end income wise of the spectrum, you want the people that are right in the middle. You want the people that are probably a lot like you. You know, they're in that high, um, you know, maybe between you know, if it's a joint household, somewhere between that um, that forty to eighty thousand dollar a year household um, is is a good sweet spot. And then, uh, you know, the households where the joint income might be into the six figures, maybe a hundred a hundred thousand dollars combined, hundred and twenty five, hundred and fifty thousand dollars combined, somewhere in there, two hundred thousand dollar combined income for a household is usually about where you're going to start to, you know. Again, well, if they've I hear you made some of these. If I hear you, hear you correctly, we're looking for rural, middle-income people. Yes, Correct. you're looking for that suburban slash rural, more you know, uh, communities and less dense, um, you know, city center type type areas. If that makes sense, yes, I think that yes. makes sense. So no, and, and we've covered income. So yeah, you're not yeah. looking for the people that are high end because yeah. it just doesn't, 
I, I, I think I've, I think in my 10 years, maybe I've written one where it was a, you know, in excess of a few million dollar home, it's just yeah. not, it's not our market. Well, the two things we're looking at, we're looking at ge geographic area is what we want to target and the income, the geographic area really is going to speak to the income. So if you're looking at rural, right. you know, grassroots America, you're going to be in that 40 to 80, maybe, you know, top out a hundred thousand dollars a year, you know, right. people, right. You know, if you go downtown, you might get in the low income areas. Uh, or if you go, you know, Beverly Hills, you're going to be in the other side of the spectrum, like you said. So, so yeah, so we got, that. that's the two other things that, we want you, that you take into consideration. To find that information, you know, I am very, you know me, I'm very simple. I don't go down rabbit holes. I don't go down rabbit holes very deep. I just don't. So the way that I'll find that out is to pick a couple of counties in an area and just Google what's the median income in um, Orange County, Florida? What's the median income in Orange County, California? What's the median home price in Orange County, Florida, in Orange County, California, in whatever county it is that you're looking at? And just take that number, trust it, go with it. Take the first couple of Google searches and go with them. It, it shouldn't be something where you're spending hours or days trying to figure out, well, I'm trying to find the ideal income and the ideal you know, home value. The other thing I will add is you're looking for um, home values that are typically less than uh, four to 500,000. 500,000 is really gonna be about where you're gonna wanna max out. So I love a home value between 100,000 and 350,000. That's a real sweet spot, in my opinion. It, it's, again, you're looking usually at dual income households where we, we, we're gonna have two people that we're gonna cover. Um, they, either one would be in a left in a, in a real lurch if the other one passed away or became uh, you know, seriously disabled. Um, so it's uh, home value, income, and you know the type of area that you're looking at, whether yeah, it's so urban, geography, is rural. The, geography is going to dictate the, the income to a certain extent. And by the sure. way, I use city-data.com. You know that yep. so I'm a little more of a conspiracy theorist than you are. <laughs> <laughs> we want fifty thousand to eighty thousand income. We want one hundred yeah. to three hundred fifty thousand dollars in home value. Yep, Is that correct. That's it. That's good. That's good knowledge, as they say. The business, good knowledge, Angela. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. I appreciate that. Any closing okay. thoughts? No, just get started. You know, just yeah. get started. We'll do more of these videos, but isolate that one thing that you're going to figure out today. Look for those three things and go do it. Go buy some leads and jump in. Yeah. We're out of here. Bye. Thank you very much, Angela. We'll have you back again next week, or then we're going to talk about two other things that we may have this lead subject exhausted. But it's a big one cool. because if you're going to work leads and you're going to spend your money, you're really going to be intentional about your business and know what you're buying. Yep. Don't just take your upline's word for it. And certainly don't take a lead vendor's word for it because yes. they're commissioned. See ya. I hope that helps you guys. Again, I appreciate uh, Angela coming on to share with everybody again this week. It's uh, nice to hear from others rather than just me. And she's a top, top elite producer. So once again, everybody, we'll wrap it up there. I know you take your valuable time to watch these videos. If you want to help me grow this channel, do me a favor. Watch the videos all the way to the end because YouTube is telling me that's a big deal when it comes to their algorithm. And so if you can, just kind of hang with us to the end of the video. Uh, and also, uh, you know, leave us a comment. Um, it shows YouTube that the content that we're putting up is valuable to somebody, right? And also like and subscribe and make a comment. Hit that bell if you get instant notifications. As always, I hope we return to you in value this week for the time that you gave us watching and supporting the channel. And God willing, I'll see you on the next video. See ya.